Hello everyone and welcome to part four of our data room training series. During this session, we'll take a look at how you can manage your diligence process directly through your Ansarada data room and some of the benefits that come from doing so. We'll also review the life cycle of a question so you can see exactly how easy this process can be for both your guests and your internal team. I'm Dan Polanka with Ansarada Support. If you're joining me for the first time, you can feel free to click the link to start from the beginning of our series. And as always, you can reach out to our client success team with any questions you might have after the video. With that out of the way, let's jump right into Q&A. When you log into your data room, there are three main sections you'll utilize regarding Q&A. The View Q&A section is where you will go to review, assign, and answer questions from your external parties. If you're not seeing this option in your navigation panel, it simply means you do not have an assigned Q&A role, which we'll cover off in just a minute. The Reports section of your room will include valuable data on your diligence workflow, enabling you to easily download an automated tracker, retain oversight, and ensure that there are no bottlenecks in your process. Your Manage Q&A section will allow you to do simply that. From this page, you can assign Q&A roles, set up question subjects and submission limits, and select your Q&A email preferences. Let's first take a look at the different Q&A roles available to both your guests and your internal team. Clicking Edit next to Assign Q&A Roles will present you with all of your existing teams. For your guests, you'll note the option to add them as a question viewer, question author, or question approver. The question viewer role is allowed to view the questions submitted by their team and any answers you have disclosed to them. This Q&A role can be assigned at any point in the deal but is often used at the end of the process to restrict guests from submitting new questions while allowing them continued visibility on existing questions and answers. The question author Q&A role will have this same visibility, but can also ask questions throughout the process. You may wish to assign one or two members of a buy side team the Q&A role of question approver. A question approver must approve any questions submitted by their team before it makes its way to your internal team. If a team does not have a question approver, their questions will be submitted to your internal team in real time. All external Q&A roles can be further limited in their question and answer visibility through the usage of question subjects, which we will review in more detail shortly. For your internal team, there are several Q&A roles available to establish a hierarchy in your process. The Q&A administrator is the most vital and only required role for your internal Q&A activity. They oversee the entire Q&A process. A Q&A administrator can assign, approve, and reject questions as needed. They can also simply answer and disclose questions back to external parties. Q&A administrators don't need to be the data room administrator, although they can be. There can also be more than one Q&A administrator if needed. When multiple Q&A administrators exist, it should be noted that they will essentially work from the same queue and will not require insight from the other Q&A administrators to action questions as they see fit. If you wish to involve other members of your team in this process, but do not want them to have final disclosure rights, you may wish to add answer drafters, answer authors, and or answer approvers to your team. An answer drafter is responsible for answering questions that are assigned to them. Answer drafters have the choice to draft answers themselves or forward questions to answer authors, answer drafters, and answer approvers. Answer drafters can only see questions that are assigned to them, and they cannot communicate directly with the Q&A administrator, allowing you to create an enforced approval process via an answer author or answer approver. Because of this, when using the answer drafter role, you must also have at least one answer author or answer approver in your workflow. Answer authors are also meant to serve in the role of creating answers, which are then approved by an answer approver or the Q&A administrator. The main difference between the answer author and the answer drafter is the fact that an answer author can send answers directly to the Q&A administrator, even if there is an answer approver in place. This allows for some flexibility in your approval process. Like answer drafters, answer authors can only see questions that are assigned to them. Answer approvers are responsible for approving answers prior to final disclosure by the Q&A administrator. Answer approvers are assigned questions and have the choice to draft answers themselves or forward the question to other answer approvers, answer authors, and answer drafters to answer. Answer approvers can see all questions that are sitting with the Q&A administrator. 
Finally, you will also note the choice of a Q&A observer with both full control and view only options. The full control observer has the same access and permissions as a Q&A admin, with the exception that they cannot be assigned questions and they don't receive Q&A notifications. This role is meant to serve as a backup to your Q&A administrator. View only observers, on the other hand, can see everything a Q&A admin can see, but they cannot take any actions in the process. This role is intended for someone who requires oversight, but does not play an active role in the diligence process. As with external Q&A roles, all internal Q&A roles can be further limited in their visibility through the use of question subjects. At Ansarada, we strive to create a Q&A experience that suits the needs of your deal. As such, these roles allow you to make your team's workflow only as simple or complex as you require. Let's take a look at some common workflows to gain a better understanding of how your process can be set up. On this page, you can see one of the most common ways of setting up your Q&A process. Here, we see a combination of a question author and question approver on your external team. Your Q&A administrator sits center in this process with an answer author set up for additional support. In this type of setup, you may also find multiple authors on both the question and answer side of the deal and observers if necessary. Either way, this process would start with a question being created by your question author. This question would be submitted to the question approver to review modify, or reject the question. If approved, the question would then be sent to your Q&A administrator. The Q&A administrator can then simply answer or reject the question back to your external team or forward the question on to your answer author to draft an answer. From here, your answer author would answer the question and send back to the Q&A administrator when ready. This process between the Q&A administrator and answer author may be repeated if modifications are needed or the Q&A administrator can simply disclose the answer back to your external team. A more complex team structure can also be utilized should you require multiple levels of review on your side of the deal. Once you have reviewed these Q&A roles, you will also most likely want to review question subjects and submission limits before allowing guests to submit questions. While neither question subjects or submission limits are required to utilize our Q&A platform, they can be of benefit to your process, as they will assist your workflow management, provide clarity in your reporting, and can be useful in providing a layer of added security to your Q&A process. Let's start by first reviewing question subjects. On this page, you will note the ability to add subjects or subject groups. Once created, your external teams can select subjects as they submit their questions. Creating a list of subjects will help your Q&A administrator easily assign questions to your internal team as they can quickly identify the context of the request. Several data room reports can also be filtered by subject to help you identify the priorities of a given external party. You can feel free to create a subject group if you wish to group multiple subjects together, but this is not required. It should be noted that subject groups are not a selectable option for your guests, just the subjects within them. After selecting Add Subject, you will note that you can add multiple subjects to the deal at the same time. Many admins choose to create a subject for each top-level folder at this point. You can then select a subject group if you've created these, or leave this set to none if you do not wish to use subject groups at this time. You will also note an option to allow free text at this point. This requires the person submitting the question to add additional text at the end of your pre-populated subject. As previously noted, subjects can serve as a convenient way of sorting or filtering some of your Q&A reporting. As a best practice, we typically recommend denying this option for the cleanest reporting setup. If necessary, you can create a subject titled Other that allows for this and serves as a catch-all for questions that may fall outside of your predefined subjects. From here, you will want to review your subject security. Subjects can be denied to a team or subteam as needed. If a subject is denied to a team, they will not be able to submit questions under this subject and will never see answers disclosed under this subject. This allows you to disclose answers to multiple parties while keeping your Q&A process secure and reducing noise for any parties not involved in those areas of the diligence process. 
It should be noted that anyone in an administrator room role will not be impacted by subject security applied to their team or subteam. On the Q&A subjects page, you can also click on actions to delete questions from the room or expand and collapse your existing list of subjects and subject groups for easier review. Deleted questions will not appear in your reporting. For auditing purposes, we highly recommend rejecting questions over deleting them. It should be noted that if subjects are not created, guests will create their own subject text for every question submitted, and you will not be able to change these retroactively. Therefore, it is highly recommended that subjects are created prior to assigning your question author and question approver Q&A roles. Once we've set up our subjects, we can return to the Manage Q&A page to set up our submission limits. Submission limits allow you to limit the number of questions a team can submit either over a given time period or over the total length of the deal. This can also be broken down by question priority. On the right-hand side of the page, you will note that this can be limited per day, week, or month, along with the ability to halt submissions completely on weekends. A good rule of thumb is to estimate the total number of questions you believe your team can manage effectively over a given time period, and divide this by the total number of teams submitting questions in the room. So if I know my team can handle 40 questions a week, and I have four external teams in the Q&A process, I can allow each team 10 questions a week. While subteams will not appear here, their questions will count toward their parent team's limits. Restricting the number of high-priority questions can also help you gain insight into the most pressing issues for an external party. For example, you may let external teams know that they can only ask two high-priority questions each week, but that high-priority questions will be answered within 24 hours of submission, whenever possible, while all other questions will be answered within 48 to 72 hours. Submission limits can be updated at any time with immediate effect should you need to grant more or less access to an existing team. If everything looks good, we can click Save to confirm our settings. Finally, you can edit your Q&A via email settings if you wish to allow members of your internal team to answer and approve questions you've assigned to them directly from their email. If enabled, answer drafters, answer authors, and answer approvers will all be able to answer questions assigned to them by replying to the email notification they receive. Answer approvers will also be able to approve answers if this option is enabled. Members of your team in an answer role will need to ensure they have not disabled their Q&A notifications in order to use this feature. At this point, your Q&A should be optimized for your deal, and you can assign question author and question approver roles to allow the diligence process to begin. Before we head out, let's take a few minutes to review the full life cycle of a question so you can get a better understanding of what your guests and other team members will see during this process. When your guest logs into the data room, they will have multiple options for asking a question. They can simply select Ask a Question next to any available folder or document to start this process. From here, they can select their question priority and the relevant subject, submit their question, and attach relevant documentation or reference additional data room documents and folders as needed. They can also ask questions directly from the View Q&A section of their room. Selecting Ask a Question here provides them access to the same workflow for a single question. They can also select Actions and Bulk Upload Questions to submit multiple questions at once. This will provide access to an Excel template that can be used to easily kickstart the diligence process. This page will also provide visibility on any existing submission limits and will allow for a final review slash edit process if there are any errors to fix, such as a missing subject or a higher number of questions than they are currently allowed. They will also be informed of duplicate questions, saving you the task of monitoring their workflow. Once a question or questions are submitted and approved by any existing question approver, your Q&A administrator will instantly receive an email notification that they have a question awaiting their action. From here, 
they can assign the question to another team member. They can also answer the question themselves and either disclose the answer immediately or submit their answer to a team member for review. When disclosing immediately, your admin will be prompted to choose if the answer should only be provided to the team that originally submitted the question or to all external participants in the Q&A process. When selecting all, this answer will only be provided to parties who are allowed access to the subject this question has been submitted under. Identifying information will also be made anonymous during this disclosure, allowing you to create some competitive tension in your deal without revealing what other parties may be involved. The Q&A administrator can also choose to reject the question back to the submitting team if a question is irrelevant or further information is required. Any of these actions will also allow the Q&A administrator to provide comments to the receiving party. If your question is assigned to additional team members, they will also have the option to provide further comments to your team. You can rest assured that the only comment that will ever be seen by an external party is when you provide a comment to them on a rejected question. Your new assignee will also receive an email notification in real time. If you are assigning internally and have enabled Q&A via email, this party may have options to approve or answer this question directly from their inbox. If prompted to answer the question, they can simply reply with their answers at this time. To approve, they simply need to reply, approved. Your Q&A administrator will also note the ability to action questions in bulk. Under the Actions tab, you can select Bulk Approve and Forward Questions to assign multiple questions to one or more members of your team. Simply select your questions, receiving party or parties, and provide any necessary commentary. The ability to bulk approve and forward questions will also be available to your answer approvers. Once answers have been submitted to the Q&A administrator for final review, they can also select Bulk Disclose Answers from the Actions tab to complete the answering process for multiple questions. It should be noted that you will need to pick a single disclosure level here, so this function may need to be used in batches if your disclosure levels vary. At any point throughout your process, you can select Export to Excel from either the Actions tab or via the View Reports page to access a full audit trail of your Q&A process. This report can be filtered and sorted via a number of different options and can either be ran as a chart optimized for further analysis or in a list format, optimized for printing and providing to team members outside of the deal room. Your additional Q&A reports can help you gain a broader perspective on your diligence workflow and identify any bottlenecks in the process. These will be explained in full detail during our session on Data Room Reports. I hope that this has provided a good jumping off point for your diligence strategy. In our next session, we'll review your Data Room's Manage Settings section in further detail, which will ensure that you can customize your Data Room as you see fit.